So here we are now back in the Gospel of Matthew. And tonight we're going to look at, or this, this morning if you're in Asia, we're going to be looking at um, chapter 4. And up to this point, uh, we looked at uh, how Matthew articulated that uh, Jesus was in the line of David. Jesus's life was fulfilling prophecy. Jesus um, was ushered in by John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was Jesus's own cousin. And he came with one purpose, was to proclaim that the kingdom of heaven was near. And we know that Jesus, when he first started preaching in Galilee, preached the same thing. And we'll learn that as we go through here. But here we find out that the kingdom of heaven becomes what's pinnacle. Now we know during creation that before this realm that we live in was created, this realm that, that houses the universe and all of the stars and all of the planets, and the earth and the water and the sun and the moon and all of mankind and all of the other creation, all of this was created within the grand domain, which is the spiritual domain, spiritual realm, which is where God is, the almighty God. And it's where Jesus, when he... Uh, was there creating creation with God the Father, with the Spirit of God moving all throughout creation, formed everything. And here we are now in time. Time is part of creation. And as we delve into chapter 4, we'll see that in God's plan, he has things timed out according to his will. John the Baptist was part of that timeline. He was a prophet, and he ushered in, as I said, um, for Jesus to come and fulfill what was written in the scriptures to be baptized. Now, once he was baptized, the Spirit came down upon him, and the Father said, this is my son who I am well pleased with. And so now... We are moving into where it says, after John's uh, baptism with Jesus, Jesus now, filled with the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It's just so interesting how things work, is that in our lives, when we come to know Christ, and we are now in Christ, you, you've got to believe that we're going to be tempted by the devil. And here's Jesus, who sets the example for all of us. He now is baptized not only in water, but he's baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the first thing that he's faced with, being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, you know, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Well, then the devil, he took him to the holy city and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Well, if you are the son of God, he said, then throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so you will not strike your foot against a stone. Once again, Jesus replied, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Now, up to this point, you can see that Satan knows that Jesus is the Son of God. But he's probing and trying to find out, because he can't read Jesus' mind, what Jesus feels about all of this, just like he does with us. And he was probing to find out just how far he could get 
So he uses scripture. He's the, the father of lies. A lot of times we think because somebody can quote scripture that it comes from God. Well, gee, we just learned right now that that's not true because Satan quoted scripture for a very, very different reason than God would quote, quote scripture. So there's a lot of people today even that quote scripture and have not the spirit of God, but may have the spirit of this world. And so here this is proof that the scripture can be quoted verbatim. But then what does Jesus do? He nullifies what Satan does by quoting scripture back and nullifying Satan's ploy. Well, of course, Satan knows that he can't continue in that ploy, so he goes on to the next one. Now, get this, the first time he was just trying to coerce him or tempt him like he did with Eve and Adam in the garden. But this next one, he took him to the holy city. Now, this means that he's got abilities that are far beyond what most people imagine. And he took him to the holy city on the pinnacle of the temple and told him to throw himself off. And of course, once again, Jesus thwarted the attempts of the devil by using scripture. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now, this is probably a, a, a supernatural encounter because we know that if we were on the top of a mountain, we can only see what we can see from around that mountain. But he was able to show him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Now get this, Satan knew. He knew what the prophet said. Satan, in fact, today, we give him less credit because we think he only knows um, what he knows, but all the demons that are around the world have been here throughout all of time. Remember, time's a creation. And they know events that have happened thousands of years ago and that they can speak to someone and recount those things. They do it all the time through hypnotism, seances, and those things. So know this, that the, the devil, Satan, he knew that Jesus was here to be the king of heaven. What was John the Baptist preaching? Oh, don't think that Satan wasn't there. He heard. He was preaching that the kingdom of heaven is near. So now here is the son of God. And Satan's thinking, maybe if I can coerce him and give him all the power and dominion in this world, then maybe, just maybe, he'll bow down to me. And he says, I will give you all of this if you will fall down and worship me. Now, this is pretty brazen, really bold. But what does Satan have to lose? So he's trying to see how far he can get with Jesus. But Jesus trusts in the Father, and he listens to the Spirit. And the spirit puts it on his heart and he says, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Well, then the devil left him. And it says in another gospel account and waited for him another opportune time to attack him. And then at that point, angels came from heaven and ministered to Jesus. What a magnificent example of what we share with Christ, if we have his spirit living within us and we're attacked by the adversary, if we trust in him, his spirit will deliver us and he will keep us free from evil when he taught us to pray. He says, this is how you should pray. Is that deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. So, it says, when Jesus heard now that John had been in prison, now Jesus has left the desert. He was out in the wilderness. He was tempted. He came through his 
fast in his temptation, and now he was prepared by life, spiritually, supernaturally, to venture out and begin his earthly ministry. This is part of that preparation process we all go through in our own lives, these challenges that we have to be faced with in life. And Jesus gave us the example, trust in, in the Lord, worship him first, put him first. So once he found out that his cousin John the Baptist had been in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and he lived in Capernaum. Now, this is all in the region of Galilee, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. To fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. So he was prophesying that Jesus would leave Galilee, go to Capernaum, and now be in this region. And Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. From that time on, so we know that he first went to Galilee, then he left Nazareth, and he went to, to this new region in Capernaum. And from that time on, Jesus began to preach. What did he preach? The Romans road? How you should be saved? Did he pull out a Bible track? No. Jesus said, repent. Turn from your life in this world. For the kingdom of heaven is near. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he then saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus looked at them and said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. Now, going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Now, they were in a boat with their father Zebedee, and they were mending their nets. They, too, were fishermen. And Jesus called them and immediately not only left their boat, they left their father, and they followed him. So this was the, the first encounter that we have where Jesus starts to not just preach that the kingdom is near, but starts to call his own disciples to follow him. It says, then Jesus went all throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching what? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Of course, news about him spread all over Syria. And people brought to him all who were ill, all kinds of various diseases, those suffering acute pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, paralyzed, and Jesus healed them. Well, the large crowds that followed him came from Galilee, from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond the Jordan. So now you can see Jesus gets baptized from John, goes and is led by the Spirit that came upon him when he was baptized, led him into the wilderness. He was then tempted by de the devil. He then, of course, was obedient to the will of God and he fulfilled the commandments of God in his, in his very actions and in his own words. The devil left him. Angels came and ministered to him. He left the wilderness. He went first to Nazareth, and then he traveled to Capernaum. And after leaving in Capernaum, fulfilling prophecy, he then called four of 
we, what we know now are his apostles to follow him, called him from the sea of Galilee and said, I will make you fishers of men. And then as the Holy Spirit fell upon him, started healing all kinds of sickness and disease, and the word about Jesus spread. There was no internet. There were no newspapers. There was no television. But people were running from town to town, village to village, region to region, to tell people about what this man, this rabbi named Jesus, was doing. And in droves, people came. Some came because in their hearts, they knew that the Messiah was coming. And maybe this was that Messiah. Others came because, well, guess what? My body's broken. I just want it fixed. Others came so they could see the magic show. They wanted to watch and see so that they could tell other people, hey, I was there when he did this and when he did that. Others came just to test him. Others came to judge him. But we know the crowd was huge. And the crowd was definitely trying to learn who this Jesus was and what, what he was here for. What is he all about? Is he the one? Well, that concludes chapter four, but we can expect that the religious leaders of that day, especially those um, who were scholarly, were ready to go ahead and take on the challenge of this unschooled rabbi who was doing all of these things and causing their disciples to stop following them because now they had run to follow this guy named Jesus. And that concludes chapter four of the Gospel of Matthew.